Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, this is a follow-up video to um, why I sold my OMI on Bitforex and closed my Bitforex account. Um, I got like a lot of questions and comments, uh, both positive and negative, uh, which is all good. I mean, everybody has different opinions. Um, but I'm just going to um, try to answer some of the questions that I got. And um, we'll start with um, the, the biggest question was, what was the issue about Bit4X in 2019? So this is old news. And um, again, this is kind of my fault. I didn't do the research um, before I opened the Bit4X account. Uh, but um, here's what it is. So back in 2019, uh, Bitwise made the report to the SEC, which um, I detailed in, in the um, previous video. Uh, and I'll put a link to the previous video in, in the description here. But much of that report about the quote-unquote fake exchanges was based on a, uh, a study by Chain Analysis. And one of the things here in this Coindesk article from 2019, it says the Bitforex exchange could keyword is could be faking its Bitcoin trading volume according to a report by Philip Gradwell chief economist at chain analysis now I'll also put a link to the chain analysis report and what they are doing or what they have what they concluded in the report was for every Bitcoin that came into Bitforex they reported 40,000 Bitcoin worth of trade volume. That's a crazy number. So for every one Bitcoin in, they reported 40,000 worth of trade volume. And um, the average was six. That's what the Bitwise report was um, talking about. And you can see some of the other exchanges that were um, listed here as suspicious trading volumes. One is Huibi. And we know what happened with those guys. Now, why they do this, and I'll put this article here from the uh, NASDAQ. And it's why do crypto companies uh, want a fake trade volume? And there are two reasons according to the NASDAQ article. One is they want to uh, stabilize the crypto market. And two is they want to uh, show that the exchange is uh, trustworthy because of um, you know high trading volumes so high trading volumes you think you're going to the exchange is trustworthy now uh, one of the other exchanges listed in the nasdaq article is okx okay so how do they do this uh, Coindesk also released the article in 2019 as when this issue became a big deal. It's for 15K, this is the article for 15K, he'll fake your trade volume and you'll get on coin market cap. So this uh, Russian 20 year old student um, does it for a living actually. He's a sophomore at Moscow State University back in 2019. So you can say, well, that that was in 2019. You know, why are you making? An, why is this an issue for you now? Well, one is I didn't know about it. Number two is what's happening in Seychelles, which I um, talked about in my uh, my previous video. So I'm just um, taking precautions and getting out now while I can. Now. One of the things, this also ties into an argument of that, hey, you know, why do you care? They're, they're just private companies. Private companies can do whatever they want. They don't have to tell us what they do. The answer to, my opinion on that is, is very, um, it's, it, this is my opinion. And um, I've operated my um, entire career with this opinion. Even public companies can do whatever they want until they get caught. So 
it is it is a fallacy to say that it is it is not true to say that private companies can do whatever they want they um, they have to operate within the letter of the law in the country they're operating in so they have to follow uh, if whether it be crypto or whatever they have to follow the regulatory law and this they have to follow AML they have to follow uh, which is anti-money laundering laws they have to follow MTL money transfer licenses in the US um, they have to follow labor laws in the country that they're employing people in or contracting in uh, they have to follow uh, regulatory laws uh, whether they're trading and that's why Seychelles was a big um, home to a lot of these crypto companies it was the crypto wild west so as they start cracking down uh, well we'll see if they, they really crack down because it's a it's a money maker for them but again the the question came up in some of the comments is why do you care and uh, I wrote back in one of the uh, to to one of the people who said you know you know who basically asked that question why do you care and and the the long and the short of it is is I'm a citizen of the world I while it hasn't been proven that um, Bitforex is financing um, terrorist organizations um, as has been proven with Binance. I'll also put a link to this article which is from the US Department of the Treasury and I'll read a quote from Janet Yellen um, Binance turned a blind eye to its legal obligations in the pursuit of profit its willful failures allowed money to flow to terrorists cyber criminals and child abusers through its platform today's historic penalties and monitor Monitorship to ensure compliance with U.S. laws and regulations mark a milestone for the virtual currency industry. Any institution wherever located that wants to reap the benefits of the U.S. financial system must also play by the rules that keep us all safe from terrorists, foreign adversaries, and crime or face the consequences. So the U.S. has thrown the gauntlet down. So you can see in this article here too is some of the... Um, organizations uh, that ran money through Binance you know Hamas Islamic Jihad Al-Qaeda uh, Iraq Syria ransomware attackers money launderers and other cyber criminals and the writings on the wall the other thing too is as a person who's quote unquote a trader slash investor um, and I'm leaving out the word collector to say a trader and investor you know I don't want to make my money or profit off of potentially illegal activities so can companies um, private companies like Binance do whatever they want they can until something happens you know and we can try to make money off of them but that's just not me it doesn't make me better or worse than anybody it's just like if you if you look at our other channel in the fishing videos I shoot but and I shoot and harvest and eat what many consider rubbish fish that's just because of what I choose to do you know it's my way of being sustainable it's my way of being a my con my way of being a citizen of the world so is it a knock against people who um, want to trade on Binance and don't care um, no that's their choice there I don't know if there's any I don't know whether there's a universal right or wrong I'm not that that smart and you know that I'm just saying this is my choice and why I chose not to um, support Bitforex any longer and part of it is quite frankly my bad 
I didn't um, do my research. I didn't, you know, if I did my research, I would not have traded uh, with that company. Uh, but um, it is what it is, you know. Ho uh, hopefully, we learn and we grow. So, am I telling you to remove, if you're in the U.S., to remove your um, assets from Bitforex? Absolutely not. I'm just giving you my FAD report, facts, analysis, and data. So the facts are that there there was there were issues in 2019 and in 2023. Seychelles is is uh, cracking down on the crypto alleged well allegedly cracking down on crypto in in first quarter of 2024 as part of the fallout from Binance. So it's up to you. you got to do what you got to do and this was just my decision and this is the explanation of why it's not FUD it's based on facts and I pretty much cite everything that I report on so um, it's really is FAD facts analysis and data just reporting what's out there what I'm learning I'm documenting my experience and I want to highlight the word my and it's my personal experience as I learn more about crypto and trading and this platform that I really really believe in you know and um, w w one last thing is you know um, I, I got a number of uh, some comments um, very respectful though that said oh uh, why why do you buy high and sell low um, just for uh, documentation sake I did not so um, I am you know even in my co my uh, collector's status um, uh, I am a flipper I we own a collectible store we buy stuff and hopefully we sell it for more than what we bought it for that's our business and it's in and it is in the collectible industry in the trading card industry in the comic industry so if you follow me on twitter i do analysis uh, chart analysis on bitcoin omi stocks stuff stuff that i'm trading and i'm basically telling you what i personally think um, the market is is doing and I'm not right all the time and I don't need to be right most of the time I just need to have my wins bigger than my losses so if I'm losing money I'll take my loss quicker and I'll ride my gains up and I'm going to talk about my trading straight my trading strategy in another video but um, no I did not lose money on Omi um, I've as I've traded Omi over the years maybe I've lost a little bit on certain trades because not every trade went right but overall no I made money on Omi and in the last trade where I closed out my bid forex I made a small profit so I hope this information was useful uh, again, this is my personal decision based on some facts that I discovered that I didn't know about. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and aloha.